because the girls are short, put it down in this one so that we can get sort of like the head height and get the faces. Uh, we're just putting on a hidden button camera so we can be doing some filming tonight as we go out looking for kids and um, nobody will be able to tell what we're doing. I'm just a sparky, I've got no specific skills in this other than uh, I guess a heart of a dad. It's all very secret agent, isn't it? <laughs> a little bit. That's not too bad. I've come to the Philippines to find out what a former electrician from Queensland is doing working undercover in brothels. And then we'll pin this one up, up into here somewhere, it won't matter. 16 years ago, Tony Kerwin founded Destiny Rescue, a Christian charity based in Thailand that helps kids trafficked into prostitution. It's funded by donations and most of the staff are volunteers. At uh, any given time, um, pretty much most nights of the week, we'd have a couple of dozen agents around the, around the world in six different countries, um, kidding themselves up, um, ready to go out into the brothels to um, get this sort of stuff on films and get some people arrested and more children rescued. So I should put on one of these hidden cameras too? Sounds good buddy. <laughs> Alright, let's go. In a few days time, Destiny Rescue will be working with local police on the biggest raid it's ever undertaken. Wow, you'd have no idea that that was a different button. The under-resourced police are grateful for any help, even from a motley crew of Australians with no background in law enforcement. The compound that we'll be raiding is owned by a, um, a retired politician, and he's very well connected. There's going to be somewhere between 150 and 250 children and women there, and we're expecting that there could be anywhere between um, about 40, 75 of those are going to be children. Tonight, Tony's offered to show me how they work the bars and gather the evidence to give to local police so they can put the pimps in prison. So, when you come into a place like this, um, with a guy like me, what, what's the cover story? Who are we? What are we doing here? For several nights, I immerse myself in a world of sleaze and exploitation. I've rarely been as uncomfortable as I am hanging out with men who pretend to be pedophiles. Where's all the young ladies, my friend? But if it's tough for me to get into character, it was once even tougher for Tony, a devout Christian whose parents didn't even drink alcohol. I felt awkward even walking into a brothel, like I felt like, should I even be in here, like this feels wrong. But at the same time, knowing that if I don't go in, then the kids that are in there are never going to have a chance of getting out. We're looking for girls, but younger than this. So how did a tradie from Queensland end up in this line of work? It was a really simple situation. I actually overheard two guys talking and um, one guy was saying how there was an American guy going through Bangkok and he was offered that he could buy children outright for 400 US dollars and do whatever he wanted to with them. Looking for younger girls. I'd never heard of people selling people in today's time. Uh, so yeah, that's what sparked it. So uh, how many how girls many, do you have? Maybe six or seven. Prostitution is illegal in the Philippines and sex workers under the age of 18 are automatically considered trafficking victims. Do you have ID? Yes. And we are... Can 
ID pimp. And their pimp can be jailed for life. This is real? Yes, sir. We have a company. In the last seven years, we've rescued over 2,500 um, kids and young adults. And um, we are having over an 80% success rate of them not returning to the sex trade, which is pretty cool. UNICEF believes there are up to 100,000 children in the Philippines involved in prostitution. Their traffickers don't require shackles. Poverty, family pressure and fear are usually enough. As a Westerner coming into a brothel, you could easily think the, these girls have big happy faces, they're smiling, they, they are enjoying themselves, they, they want to be here. Um, but that's just not the reality. They, they feel like they have no other choices. Hopefully, any children they may rescue in the upcoming raid will end up in a place like this. We had 49 clients as of today. The youngest age is 7 years old until 18 years old. My name is Marlene Capio Richter. I am the center manager, paralegal officer of Preda Foundation. The Prada Foundation is a separate charity that rescues and rehabilitates victims of sexual abuse and trafficking. You can't fail to notice the deep connection Marlene has with the girls. This work is very personal for her. I was being victim of sexually abuse when I was a child by my stepfather. And at that time, my mom did not believe on me. When Marlene was 13 years old, she ran away from home. Living on the street, vulnerable to exploitation, she was sold into prostitution. I become submissive. And I said that, what, nothing loose because I am already sexually abused by my stepfather. If this is the will of God, then let it be. So I work as a prostituted child and I follow the order of my boss in order for me to survive. Marlene was rescued by Prada after three years and lived in this shelter. She thrived here and at university, but she's still trying to make up for her lost childhood. I have no good memory of my childhood. Before I have no toys, I have nothing. That's why when I get my first salary, I buy it all toys. Dolls, toys. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I wish for every child. I would say that I never experienced to play. That's why in the center, I always give time for our children to play. I took the social work as a profession because I want to help people. Children who are victim of human trafficking and victim of sexually abuse because I fully understand what they have gone through in this life. Marlene wants me to meet one of the girls she's been helping. A 15-year-old we'll call Jasmine. It's unusual to identify children who are victims of sexual abuse, but Prada believes that speaking out is both beneficial and safe. Jasmine was a rebellious child who joined a street gang when she was only 14. Yung leader po namin, alam ko po na nagbebenta siya pero hindi ko po nararanasan kaya nagtitiwala pa lang po. Then yun nga yung 
first na ano, binenta niya po kami dalawa nung kasama ko po. Wala po kaming magawa kasi malaki din po siyang tao tapos takot po rin kami sa kanya. Ma-authorize po kasi yung boses niya. One day, her pimp accepted money from an undercover agent. Uh, yun po, nangyayari po yun yung pagbebenta sa amin ng mga kasama ko. Three months po, three months pa bago po kami na, ano, na rescue ng NBI. Nakakatawa lang po kasi, ano, nakakulong na po yung, ano namin, yung abuser po namin. This is just the kind of outcome Destiny Rescue is hoping for with the big raid it's planned. <laughs> but things don't always go so smoothly. The anti-trafficking in persons division of the Philippines National Police occupies just one small room, and today it's a hive of activity. They're putting the final touches to a joint operation with Destiny Rescue that's been months in the planning. With help from police special forces, they're mounting a raid on some brothels several hours' drive from Manila. We're expecting to, there'll be at least 50 underage girls there tonight, and um, each of them being forced to have sex with customers multiple times every night and uh, goodness knows how many days, weeks, months has this has been their life. That's the mark money. Operation Phantom, as it's known, isn't just the result of a tip-off from Destiny Rescue, it's being bankrolled by the Australians. Philippines is a third world country and we lack resources and we have just to patch up all what we have it's frustrating because uh, we have to sometimes rely on such NGO like the uh, Destiny Rescue. We've been working on this case for many, many months. So I'd hate to try and guess the number of man hours that have gone into building this operation. Baka mamaya nag-rush up na yung ano, hindi pa natin naya-abot yung pera. So yun ang maging kyo doon. A lot can go wrong. Tony's worried about the potential for failure after attempting a raid at the same location with a different law enforcement agency last year. They were tipped off that we were coming and uh, the night of the raid there were no girls, no kids to be found. I was messed up, just thinking about if one of my kids were one of those kids and, and um, knowing that, um, knowing that we're not getting them out that night was, it definitely missed, messed with me and messed with the team in a big way. I wasn't allowed to film the briefing before we head out. But when I catch up with Tony afterwards, he's feeling hopeful. I'm still crapping myself a bit because it's going to be pretty intense, but um, I feel a lot more comfortable knowing that these guys are real professionals, they're sharp, they know what they're doing, they're highly trained, so really expecting a positive outcome tonight. Police used a drone to get a bird's eye view of our destination tonight. A cluster of bars with bedrooms out the back, well off the main road. Victor five. There are undercover agents inside the compound already. Once they hand over money for the girls, the raid will begin. All you need, go, go. In the first stage of the raid, special forces storm the compound. I arrive with the rest of the police and Destiny Rescue in the second wave a few minutes later. Opo, kayo, opo, opo, opo. 
Opo kayo, opo, opo nga eh, pinapaupo kayo po sir. Pretty quickly, everything's under control. But the number of sex workers here and how many minors are among them is unclear. The men, pimps and customers, are being searched and questioned. Husbands are worrying about how they'll explain this to their wives. Tony joins in the search of the rooms in case anyone is hiding. Everywhere, there are sordid traces of the lives that played out here until just moments ago. In countries like the Philippines and Thailand, there's understandably a lot of focus on sex tourism, but most of the demand comes from locals. This place was frequented by farmers and tricycle drivers who paid as little as $12 for sex. Hey. G'day. There aren't as many women here as we'd expected, but Tony seems upbeat. You look relieved. I am. I am very relieved. It's, this has been um, uh, on the go for many months now. It was failed once with a different department. Um, so we were really hanging on that tonight it would be a real thing and we can rescue all these kids. and get the people who have done the wrong thing um, in jail, hopefully never get out. That's the goal. It's already after midnight and the women are being taken back to police headquarters to be processed and assisted by social workers. How many miners would you hope to rescue to sort of make all the resources and the time that you put into it worthwhile? It's a victory regardless of um, the numbers, but I'm, I'm really hoping for it to be a lot of children. It takes several days to confirm their ages. In the end, police identified 67 trafficking victims, but none of them were minors. Four pimps were arrested and charged. In human trafficking, humans are goods, and even saving one soul. In this uh, kind of uh, operation, is satisfying already. Police were later told someone had visited the compound on the morning of the raid and whisked away several dozen young girls. It seems there had been another leak. It is devastating when you know that this kid, they're going to be raped tonight, tomorrow night, weeks ahead, and it's, um, yeah. For those lucky enough to be rescued, rehabilitation brings new challenges. To find out what rehabilitation looks like, I turned back to social worker Marlin Kapiorishta.
she invited me to see a primal therapy session. Concentrate. It's a shocking window onto what they've suffered. Isipin niyo nung kayo ay bata pa. Masaya naglalaro. Walang problema. Pero isang araw sa buhay natin, hindi man natin gusto. Dumating ang isang dilubyo. Ang dilubyo na yon. To help the girls move on from their trauma, Marlene encourages them to express all the negative emotions they've been bottling up. Some of these girls were first abused and then trafficked by their own parents. May nakinig ba? Walang nakinig. Walang boses na naglakas ng loob na pakinggan kayo. Kasi kung meron man, di sana hindi nandito kayo sa preda. Sarili mong nanay, binubugaw ka sa sarili niyang employer. The girls spend up to a year at the shelter before they're carefully resettled, if not with their immediate family, then at least with trusted relatives. Rehabilitation doesn't always work. Some trafficking victims will return to prostitution. But they get an education here that hopefully leads to a safer and more rewarding livelihood. I want to finish high school and then to graduate college to be a successful doctor. I want to create a medicine of Ebola. <laughs> you want to create a vaccine for yes. Ebola? Yes. That is a pretty ambitious goal. <laughs> <laughs> Those on the front line of this struggle, like Marlen and Tony, know the odds are stacked against them. There's figures thrown around of about 1.2 million new children every year are lured into the sex trade. Specifically, the, Specifically sex, trade. the sex trade. It's not impossible to win the fight, but it's going to require a lot of us to get into the fight. any individual do a little help, it become bigger and bigger. For example, I will stop. Who will do? 